I played soccer for the first time in, uh, I guess, in a uh, organized event as a ninth grader at the junior high. So our junior high was seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. So it was a big decision going from eighth to ninth grade because the decision was either uh, cross country, soccer, or football. So all my buddies were playing uh, football, except for two who had played some type of soccer. I don't know where, because it wasn't a very big sport in Middletown, New Jersey, but uh, they had played a little bit and they were playing, they were gonna play soccer and they kept you know, harassing me to play soccer and my parents said, do what you want. I was five foot tall and I probably weighed uh, 70 pounds. So uh, at the last minute, I went to soccer practice instead of football practice, even though I had dreams of being Johnny Unitas and Joe Namath. And the second week, I think the coach threw me into the goal, even though I was the shortest guy on the team because I could catch the ball. And I could jump a little bit even then. So my first year was uh, spent picking the ball up out of the goal after teams annihilated our team. Uh, so I started, that's where I started in school soccer and I, I did it uh, all through high school so I could stay fit and get ready for my, at that time my first love was basketball. Actually my second love, my first love was baseball when I was really little and then basketball and then soccer. So uh, going to college and, and uh, I played, uh, I went to the Air Force Academy at first and I thought I was going to play basketball there and I didn't, left there at um, semester and my parents said well if you're if we're going to help you with school you have to go to Calvin College where we went in Grand Rapids Michigan and I had no other plan and I didn't have any money so I ended up at Calvin it was the best thing that ever happened to me uh, I played uh, both basketball and soccer there I got my first job because the principal at Fort Lauderdale Christian High School was a was a Calvin College graduate and played soccer and basketball at Calvin just like I did and he came up to Grand Rapids, Michigan from Fort Lauderdale looking for a soccer coach. So his first call obviously was to Dr. Zaitema in the phys ed program because he was the soccer coach and he asked him, do you have any seniors that are capable of starting a soccer program? We're dropping football at our school and we're gonna start soccer and Dr. Zaitema said, I have just the guy for you. He was hired as our athletic director and um, we knew he had soccer background and we had football at the time, um, he was very serious and very organized and very passionate about the sport. We could tell that from the beginning. It was a perfect job for me because uh, I got to coach the two sports I liked the most and I was my own boss, I was the AD, I didn't have anyone hovering over me. The principal and I got along really well. He let me do my own thing as long as I was within some boundaries. And uh, by the end of 10 years, we had some really good teams in basketball and soccer because we had a program from fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth, ninth and 10th, and of course the varsity. And I had a hand in all of those sports and, and had some good coaches who had shared the same kind of philosophy that we're gonna develop skill, how to play together those kind of things and that culminated in soccer with the state championship and uh, uh, looking in the, at the cupboard at the time there was, there was nobody coming up in either basketball or soccer so we were really successful that last year and uh, that kind of forced my hand and I decided to go back to school. Eric had a um, grad assistant position and that's how he was able, we were able to get him through um, to get his doctorate to be able to coach um, at the college level. My wife and I and our oldest two boys, uh, Cole and Coton, we, uh, we, I guess, Beverly Hillbilly did all the way to Albuquerque, New Mexico with a, a moving van and uh, my truck with uh, Sheila's car towed behind and uh, we just picked up and moved, sold everything we had in Fort Lauderdale. and. Uh, I had an assistantship at the University of New Mexico and uh, did all my coursework in the two years while we were there and Sheila worked at a local hospital. Uh, we drug, drugged the boys wherever we went so they spent a lot of time in the gym with me. Uh, she would drop them off at the end of my teaching schedule and then I'd have them for the rest of the day. And My advisor for my uh, dissertation and for graduation was uh, Dr. DeGroot and Dr. DeGroot graduated from Monmouth College right up the road here and he went to school with uh, uh, the uh, head of the physical education program, Dr. Tucker, 
at uh, Loris College in Dubuque, Iowa. So one phone call got me an interview when they opened up the soccer and a teaching position in sport management at Loris College. So uh, again, uh, you know, someone knew someone and took a chance on me and uh, I spent five years at Loris. And in the meantime, Quinn and McLean came along, so we ended up with four boys. And uh, uh, when we, uh, we moved down here, they were all small yet. And uh, so after five years, uh, I came to Western. We loved it there. Uh, it, was, it was a great experience for us. But he did want to develop more, and he wanted to um, be able to provide scholarships. And that was his dream, I believe. Um, to coach Division I level. And because he had um, the teaching experience and his doctorate at that point in time, he was able to, and we were grateful, to be able to come to Macomb and uh, coach Division I. I almost quit the first year. Uh, it, was, it was even more different than coaching the kids at Loris. And uh, I wasn't happy. Uh, but some of that was because I had trouble with the first team. They, they didn't think I knew what I was doing. Uh, they didn't want to play for me. They were, you know, the, the other coaches, players, didn't really have time to recruit uh, because I didn't get the job till March. And, and the first year was, was a struggle because of the uh, personality conflicts between the seniors and juniors who had been here and they wanted to do it a certain way. They played it differently, and I wanted, to, I wanted my style was way different than the way they wanted to play. So that, that, that first year was difficult. Uh, we, we, we were pretty good, but we didn't win a lot of games. I think we were 7 and 12, something like that. But uh, we hung in there, and uh, our kids were happy. And my wife was happy because the kids were happy. He would let us travel with him on buses and vans, and we'd pretty much just do whatever we wanted. So he was always with the team and whatnot, so bus rides were always fun. Be caught crawling around on the floors underneath the guys' feet, and they'd be living, lifting us up above their heads, passing us around the bus and stuff. So it was basically just recess at first. You get to know a lot of guys over the years, and so I've, I can't tell you how many hundreds of players I know from you know, the Western teams back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and uh, you know, and to know all those guys and to be around the program, I think it made it that much more fun when I was able to, to put on the jersey. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I grew up watching Western play. Uh, I mean, we used to, when we were little, McLean and I would go out and watch practices and uh, we'd run around Western Hall and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I always see some some jan janitors and teachers always saying they remember me making, doing dumb stuff around campus with my brother. You know, there's signs all over campus here today and they originated, I think, from uh, McLean and Quinn. It said, no, the signs read, no unsupervised children allowed in this building. And because uh, those guys explored every building uh, on this campus, they were dropped off uh, after school. Their bus route dropped them off here, not at home you know, because my wife was working. So uh, they, uh, they spent a lot of time at practice and obviously they've been around the game and they've been around sports and uh, they all played basketball, they all played soccer, they all kicked for Macomb High School football team. Uh, each one bettered the other's record because they had more opportunities to do that. The boys inherently, I mean, Eric, you know, you want to say, okay, yeah, you talk about it every night or Eric talks about it every night with the boys and that wasn't necessarily slow. So he would throw, um, he was talking about the other night, he would throw a baseball with all the boys, you know, play catch with all the boys, play, you know, throw the football, do other things. They, every Christmas they go to the basketball court and play basketball. But they always seem to fall back to soccer and that's their choice. I think that we all just knew what we liked. We, we wouldn't really play, you know, we'd play like 2v2 basketball at home sometimes, but it was always 2v2 soccer in the backyard. You know, McLean and I versus Quinn and Coton or something like that, a variation of that. So I think it's just uh, being around it all of our lives, it just formed as a, a bond between all of us and that's what we all love to do. You know, we hoped that they'd all 
have an opportunity to play college sports because I knew that if they play college sports, they'd probably graduate. And if they graduated, they'd probably have a, a, a really good experience in college and it would help them grow up. And everyone needs that opportunity, you know, to grow up in a good environment. You know, so Cole came here and then he, we ended up pushing him out of town. He needed to get away. He was too comfortable here. He went to a junior college and played two years there, came back. I learned how to deal with things without my family, you know, like just going home to them. I had to call them if I wanted, or I think I just became more independent, uh, which is a great thing. Uh, but the coach I played for there also played for my dad, so a lot of it, a lot of the style was the same. Uh, Coton was uh, the most athletic between Cole and Coton, and he started as a freshman. I never, I never looked at other schools. I, I guess my, some of my brothers have looked at other schools. I never went on a recruiting trip anywhere else. It was as soon as the day when he said, you know, you, you might be able to play. You know, maybe by your senior year, you know, be in the practice squad for three years. Maybe by your senior year, you'll have some minutes. And he was probably tougher on me than anyone else. Uh, I always tell people this story. They don't believe me. But going into my freshman year, um, he gives out a conditioning packet and you're supposed to do that, you know, stay in shape and he goes, you better be ready for 120s, which is our fitness test and, and he goes, if you don't pass, I'm cutting you. And so that summer, it was like, holy cow, if I don't get in shape and can pass this fitness test the first time, then uh, I'm not going to be able to be on the team. I think I saw that Coton was going to be uh, a big part of our team uh, his senior year in high school. He, he, dominated in his in the high school area and they went pretty far and he scored a ton of goals uh, for his high school team and he was growing and he was, got some speed to him and when he got to 6'2 and he could jump and head the ball we knew that he was going to be a pretty good defensive player. Uh, Quinn decided to go to Quint or to Springfield and and so he could play right away he wanted to get out of town. I mean I didn't know what I exactly what I wanted to wanted to do coming out of high school and so I was actually thinking about kicking um, at some smaller colleges, kicking uh, for football. And then I was contacted by Illinois Springfield and their smaller Division II school. So um, they contacted me and uh, so I went and visited and I really liked it and he spent two years at uh, UIS and played and started in a ton of games there and then came back and it's been a different experience for him because he's got to fight for playing time, but he's done well with it. And then McLean, having three older brothers, uh, grew up and he's probably the most technical guy because he, if he wanted to get the ball in the backyard, he had to learn how to keep it and those guys couldn't catch him when he had the ball. So it was interesting watching how he uh, grew up being the littlest and having to fight so much, and he might be the scrappiest player we got. He's pretty mean on the field. I really never thought about going anywhere else, so it was a pretty easy decision. Here at Western, he's really built like, uh, a tradition of being a family. Um, so I think after we're gone, it won't be much different because he cares just as much about all the other players as he does us. He treated us just like players. When it was time in practice and during games, you know, especially in my case, it was always player, not a son. Um, and during the seasons, we tried to keep that relationship separate um, if we could and, uh, and just keep it professional. And uh, I, I, he may not say it, but I think he's enjoyed having us. Most of us, he's still got He'll probably have three more years of McLean, the youngest, so, and, uh, but I think he's enjoyed it, hopefully. He talks to Coton about coaching a lot now, and Cole as well. Um, I'm sure when we're all done, uh, we can all join those conversations about coaching, about the team. Uh, it'd just be a different perspective. Yeah, I try to convince them not to go into coaching because it's difficult to find a job, for one. Uh, the lifestyle is tough if you don't learn how to deal with it. You know, you see a lot of burnout. You see a lot of families that are dysfunctional, you know, because it's hard on the wife, uh, especially in Division One recruiting. You're gone, you're gone, you're gone. And, and if you don't have the ability like I did to, you know, to, to maybe bring the family into it, it could be very, very difficult on a family. Uh, but they, you know, they, they were just exposed probably to too much sport and they really love it. So uh, as I try to 
steer them the other way and say there's other things you could do. And uh, they, but now that they've chosen at least Cole and Coton, you know, I'm happy for them because they're happy. And and I think that bottom line, they saw that, you know, they heard me say I got the best job in the world. And and then and I live up like that. I mean, I I have it really good. Over the years, seeing all the guys that my dad has uh, had relationships with, and him trying to have a positive impact on their lives and then seeing them five years down the road come back to Western and for them to show their gratitude and and how much they respected him as a professor, coach, mentor, whatever it was, to see those relationships and for him to have that impact, I wanted to be a part of that. And I think that being a college soccer coach is a, a really good way to do that. I always thought of myself as like more of a teacher than anything and that's what I wanted to be like a teacher at first but then I kind of changed I just want to coach now put all of my time into that um, I think being the oldest of four brothers I was always geared towards you know helping and teaching them so it makes me happy to do that I would like to coach probably at the high school or club level though I don't think I would coach at the collegiate level but yeah I would definitely like to uh, coach some younger ages. I have no idea what I want to do, but not coaching. I'm not, that's not who I am really. I can't, I don't think I can coach, but I'm, I'm in construction management right now, so we'll see how that goes. It's, it's been, it's been nice to see them find the same niche and we'll see where it ends up, you know, for Cole and Coat and uh, Quinn and McLean. I don't know what'll happen with them, you know, uh, McLean. He's, uh, he talks different things all the time, you know, and I don't know if coaching is in his future. Quinn, I could see Quinn coaching for sure, but uh, you know, he's gonna major, he's majoring in physical education. So if he gets a teaching job, I'm sure he'll wanna coach. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep track of him and I'll help him if I can, but the biggest thing is uh, if they're happy, I'm happy. We have high expectations and we are passionate about life and about each other, about soccer, about friends and family. And so hopefully that passion lives on. I don't know, I don't usually think about that, what, what people think of our family, but um, hopefully they see us as respectable, hardworking, uh, hardworking people and that, uh, you know, we're gonna treat people with respect and, and high demanding, obviously, of our, you know, our students, student athletes in terms of me and my dad and um, but just respectable hardworking people I, I hope that that people see us that way. Uh, I would say hardworking um, before all uh, I mean as, as long as they see that that uh, that we work hard I think that's the most important thing um, other than that I don't care too much. But we work hard for sure. Um, we're honest and we take responsibility for our actions. Good characters, good people, I guess. Um, I want to say it doesn't really matter, you know, because we know who we are, but we'd like them to think of us as good people. Hardworking, honest people uh, that are loyal. Um, that made a difference in someone's life, maybe, somehow. So if, if that happens, I guess we'll all be happy.